What I'd like to talk about today is the sine wave response and Bode plots. There are two ways to create a Bode plot for measured data. And I'm going to talk about this first because we're actually going to do the inverse to interpret a Bode plot and sine waves. But the two ways are you can just input a series of sine waves in a logarithmic progression of a known amplitude and frequency. Now, what frequencies to use? It kind of helps to know what HS is so that you can be centering your data around critical frequencies such as um, the cutoff frequency divided by 10, the cutoff frequency itself, and 100 times the cutoff frequency. Remember, you can't take uh, an infinite amount of uh, data in this. You have to be judicious, even if you are using um, you know, a Python script to automate your test measurements. So then you would plot uh, the magnitude uh, of the amplitudes ratio and the phase, just as a reminder. Get the laser pointer going. Is you measure the delay from the input to the output, all right, and divide that by the period of the input. And then that ratio you can put into 2 pi or 360. Now, because the input and the, out, the, the output comes after the input, the phase has to be minus. And just so you know, the input, the inverse of this method can be used to find the output of a system to a sine wave input. Now there is another way, but it helps to know uh, HT so that you know how long to keep the step active for. Would you take the derivative of the, out, of the output and the input that you've measured and then take the fast Fourier transform of each signal and then you plot the magnitude and phase of that ratio. And yes, you can use the impulse response and just take the FFT of the measure of the measurement of the impulse response, the FFT of the output to the input response, and that'll give you the Bode plot right away without those derivatives. So let's look at a sine wave and a low pass filter. So we're going to convolve a sine wave with omega 1 times the impulse response of a low pass filter that has a critical frequency omega 2. So we take the Laplace transform of that sound sine wave of omega 1 in radians per second and we just get the frequency we're at divided by s squared plus the frequency we're at squared. The Laplace transform of a low pass filter the critical frequency at omega 2 is just omega 2 divided by the sum of s and omega 2. Convolution in the time domain, multiplication in the frequency domain. We do need partial fraction expansion and um, this turned out to be a lot more work than I had expected but with the help of Wolfram Alpha and Simpy, I was able to come up with this where we have um, the critical frequency squared plus the frequency we're at squared then you can see this constant of omega 1 omega 2 squared minus omega 1 omega 2 s and we have this relationship over here which then it's better to expand so the first one we have which is effectively a sine wave because there's no s here here we actually have a cosine wave and here even though all these omegas might make it hard to see this is really just a low pass filter again so if we take the inverse Laplace transform we get a scaling function times a sine wave minus another scaling function times a cosine wave plus a scaling function times an exponential decay. Now, this term, it's there, although you can't always see it. And especially if you're testing a system where 
um, even a 10 hertz signal has changed 10 times in one second for looking at it this will have decayed down to zero so if t time times the critical frequency gets greater than five this term just ex exponentially decays and we're left with this relationship which we can convert into a single sine wave with phase which takes a little bit of doing but if you use this relationship where you have a constant times sine plus a constant times b you can get another constant times sine with a phase offset we just have the magnitude relationship here and the phase relationship here when you plug these constants in you get a rather involved function for the magnitude but the phase is pretty simple there's let's think about three cases when the frequency of the sine wave is a lot less than the critical frequency all right so let's do that well that means omega 2 is a lot bigger than omega 1 and this collapses to just 1 and since these two since this would be uh, at a magnitude and phase plot this would be the real part and this is very close to zero the phase becomes zero when the frequencies are equal to each other that reduces to the square root of one half and if omega 2 and omega 1 are equal to each other that's minus 1 and we get a phase of minus 45 degrees when the phase when omega 1 is a lot bigger than omega 2, meaning it's a lot faster than the cutoff frequency, we actually get this ratio. The frequency of the filter divided by the frequency of the sine wave. And this becomes minus 90. That should be, uh, this should still be minus 1. What it is, is this is going towards infinity. This is staying constant. Um, and so it should go to minus 90. These three cases are, we can be seen in the Bode plot. So here's the 0 dB part where we're a lot less than the cutoff frequency, in this case 10 hertz. And you can see that's an asymptote that goes out that way. When we're much greater than, we actually get 20 log omega 2 divided by omega 1, which is a straight line which is another asymptote and it can be a little bit hard to draw but the intersection of this should be at the uh, cutoff frequency which is minus 3 dB which we can more easily pull off from minus 45 degrees 10 Hertz rather than trying to find 3 dB and then 10 Hertz but we have 0 dB 0 phase shift minus 3 dB minus 45 phase shift and then uh, over here we're following this relationship with a phase of minus 90. This was a circuit that I used to create these plots. You can download it and run it if you like. So let's look in the time domain when the frequency of the sine wave is a lot less than the frequency of the cutoff filter. And you can see um, there is a little bit of delay but that delay compared to the whole period would be almost close to zero, so close to zero phase. And the magnitudes are hard to detect by eye um, that they're different. And remember, the, the logarithmic would take these slight differences and then bring them almost to zero. Then when we have the time domain response, when the frequencies are equal, you can see the gain is reduced, and we're getting about... 0.707 compared to the input and that we look at the phase there's a delay which would be uh, minus 45 now notice there is this weird shape right here that isn't doesn't look just like a sine wave we'll talk about that later because it'll be more response a lot easier to see here when the frequency of the sine wave is a lot bigger than the cutoff frequency of the filter and
you see that the sine wave starts up here, goes up high, but then eventually starts to go about zero. Well, that is that exponential decay part that normally you never see. Um, but because in this case, the frequency of the filter is a lot higher than the, of the, of the sine waves a lot higher than the filter, you can still see this. And so out here, yep, phase shift would be minus 90. The gain would be reduced to 0.1, which is minus 20 B dB. Now, if you want to see the output of a sine wave to a system and you have the Bode plot, just find the gain and phase from the Bode plot and use this equation. Whatever the gain is, you put it here, divided by 20, raise that to the power 10, multiply it by a sine wave, and then add in the phase. Now, many times in books, they'll use 90 degrees or 180 degrees or 45 degrees. And yes, we mix units of degrees and radians. To really plot it out in Excel or Python, you do have to convert it to radians.